welcome you today to Let's Talk Money with Dave and Rev. Uh, but we're not here with Dave. We no, have, we're no, not. we're not. It's just us two. It's just us two. And if you listen to a recent podcast we did on CHRI, it was Let's Talk Money with Rev and Ray. Uh, specifically because uh, if you listen to that one, we I, Dave, I was going to say Dave and I wrote the book, but I guess we kind of did it together. I wrote a book called Cultivating Trust, which is probably what you've heard. And we did a great interview for on CHRI and for the podcast. Um, but we wanted to dig a little deeper today into some of the themes in Cultivating Trust. So um, we've invited Ray, or I've invited Ray, I guess, Dave's not yeah, here, yeah, yeah. To, to lead a discussion, to interview me on some of the things that I wrote about in the book. And we're just glad you've joined us today. So uh, I guess we can take it away from there. Is All there right. anything else I need to explain? No, <laughs> I think that's great. Um, I'm just wondering, if you could share with us, Reb, how you came up with the name of the book. Oh, um, that's actually a great question because when I started uh, writing in my little Google, Google Drive file, I had a, I put unleashed from worry. Okay. So unleashed being a word that we use up more than enough for mm -hmm. our um, workshops that we do with our coaching clients. And I thought, well, cause that seemed to be the focus in my heart because God was talking to me about the need to look at worry and how do we be free from worry around money. And as I talked to the publisher when I met them and we were talking about ideas and names, he said, well, maybe focus on worry isn't such a great thing. You don't want that mm. to be the focus word. So I'm like, okay, well then what's the opposite? And um, it just kind of dropped in my heart you know, well, it's about trust. It's trusting the Lord within our financial journey. And then that word cultivating, I can't remember now where it came from other than my farming background, because I grew up on a farm in Niagara on the Lake. And there's a lot of cultivation happening in my life, just in the practical on the farm. So I just tied the two together and it seemed to be God's yes to me for that title. So in you know, having grown up on a farm myself, if we take that analogy even further, cultivating, you can cultivate at the top level or you can actually cultivate into the deep places. Mm -hmm. And having read your manuscript, what would you say in terms of the level that you have experienced yourself perhaps and what level you're inviting others into in the cultivation process? Right. Um, I think we're going to go uh, deeper than just the surface. I, d I don't know what you felt yeah, when you yeah, read no, it. I did. I yeah. Did, yeah. Um, so the journey for David and I at More Than Enough has been uh, into deep places. Like you don't become financial coaches and then not practice what you preach. You try, try to. But that often meant, do I really trust God in my bank account? And one of the things that um, you had you had sent me some great questions, and one of the things you had asked was about what had, had been a lesson I had been learning, or I mm -hmm. can't remember how you yeah. worded it. And I was thinking about that, and I thought it it's putting trust in my the dollar signs in my bank account. So if my bank account is really full of nice zeros or whatever number I think is trustworthy, then I'm I'm okay, I'm content. But the moment you live check to check, or in our case, some of our story is we didn't have a paycheck. Mm -hmm. Well, is my discontent, is my contentment gone because I no longer have a full bank account? And I had to deal with that, and I think I still do. Like, as a woman, they say women get their security and a home and safety and things that are routine, and you take that away, and what do you trust in? And that has been one of the biggest lessons. So when I wrote this book, I don't hesitate to go there. So I ask some really good questions, I think, just for people to consider mm -hmm. and to get honest with themselves about what they believe about who God is to them. Yeah. So you're, in essence, inviting them onto a journey yes. to go into deeper places. Yes, yes. I Yeah, I would say that that's what the book's about. It's interesting that you mentioned this 
because I, and I keep looking down at the book, the book's right here, but it has a ch nice tree on it. It took us a long time to get the design for the cover, but by the way, that's a sidebar. Um, the gentleman who read the manuscript, um, as so a couple people read the manuscript, but I had my friend Tim go through it with a fine tooth comb because mm -hmm. he's very particular. And at the end of it, he actually questioned why I had titled it the way I did. He loved cultivating trust, but the, the, this, the little title underneath is Finding God's Hope and Freedom for Your Finances. And he says, this book isn't only about money. This is really more about relationship with the Lord and it's about life. So I had to really stop and ponder mm. because he's right. And what you had just said, it, it really is about going deeper in our relationship with the Lord in relation to money. But it also applies to so many different things as well. So I'm wondering if, if we don't always get the connection, the issues of trust and security. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, um, being involved also in a ministry with finances, people always, or I shouldn't say always, often ascribe security to, like you said, the number of zeros in your mm -hmm. bank account and that kind of stuff. And so, um, but you invite them to go deeper into the place and explore some real genuine heart issues mm -hmm. in there. Um, and it's very invitational. Yeah, you, you don't have to um, like it. You don't have to go there. You know, I, I find that it's the kind of book I would probably have on my shelf. And as, as God drew you to it, you take it out and read a few chapters and then take the time to process what God is asking you within those pages. Because like there are different themes. There's, you know, gratitude, there's generosity. Um, I wrote a chapter called The Sweater and I actually rewrote it because the same gentleman um, who edited the book said, I don't think this chapter is hitting the mark. And <laughs> so I went back and rewrote it and it's now one of my favorite chapters because he was right. I, I fine tuned it in a way, but it was a, the story of, of um, me knitting. So I knit, I'm, I don't knit lots. I'm not a you know, professional or anything. I, I do enjoy it. And over the years I knit, had knit Dave a sweater and I thought this is um, like sweaters are a big deal. I'm not, I'm not really crafty or gifted, but I finished it. And I was so proud of myself. And I tell you, I don't think it was in his hand an hour. And he asked me to give, to give it away to a friend of ours. And I was like, what? Um, and, and you may ask, well, what does that story have to do with money? But it had to do with my heart around having enough or around generosity like there was a whole bunch of pieces and I had to linger and I actually asked him I said I need three days give me three days to process this because I'm saying no right now and I think you don't care but that's not what he was thinking he was thinking of a young woman who was going to Russia had not a lot of support and would need warm clothing and that sweater was gorgeous and big and cozy and and of course, in the end, we gave it to her and there were many, many blessings in that story. But I mean, I was provoked and mm -hmm. why was I? So you're going to, people are going to read those stories and I hope they stop and ask themselves the same question and can identify maybe with some of the stories I tell. Well, I like how you put it, um, taking the book, being drawn to it, reading a few chapters and then perhaps setting it down. Mm -hmm. Because I think one of the things we refer to in the podcast is that you can you can skim through it, you can read through it, but if you actually take the time to chew on it, mm -hmm. um, you actually draw out the richness of of um, the scripture that you've included, the questions mm -hmm. you've included, and some of the stories, and then just the heart sharing that you do. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just hoping that people actually take the time, because I know mm -hmm. personally, sometimes you can read a book for the sake of reading the book, or you can use it as a tool in your life. Yes. Was that something that you envisioned as you wrote the book? Was that kind of one of your purposes or intents? Or was it different? No, I, you know, it kind of unfolded before me. Um, because we do the practical pieces and the heart pieces, so if you look, the, people listen to the podcast, you know that we're about the heart and the money because money's a tool and there's a lot of 
our heart and um, perspective and our money stories that affect how we deal with money and may be the reasons why we are where we are today. So when I was writing it, I didn't want it to be a telling book. I didn't want, like as coaches at More Than Enough, we are trained to ask good questions mm -hmm. and to let the folks we coach lead the discussion and lead um, you know, with the Holy Spirit where they want to go. So I didn't want it just to be a, well, this is what you do to trust God. And maybe there's some of that in there, but as I asked the questions, I was really asking questions I've asked myself and, and putting the scripture in there and having some themes that you might not think are, are really related to money. We talked on the podcast about lament, right? You know, what does lament have to do with your money story or your finances or trusting God? Well, I think it's really important. I think worship is important. You know, even music is important as I w wove in some songs in, in there. I, I kind of, I, I am a little bit surprised of how it came together and how it turned out. I, I hesitated to call the book a devotional because I didn't want it to be just a sit down, read through it, pray your five minute prayer, and then you move on. I didn't want people to pick it up for that reason. I, I just... I, I want people to sit with it. So you've been very intentional about how you um, framed it or yes. structured it or purposed in your heart to yeah. actually share in the way you did with mm -hmm. it. I think so. I, I think it's, it's like I've said to you before, I tried to create a space where people could feel that they were sitting next to me on the couch, kind of like what we're doing and that they would feel like um, we were just having a discussion without judgment, just asking questions. Now, sometimes when those questions get asked of us, we do get defensive. So if folks find they're defensive, then I have a, a phrase in that sweater chapter called linger with what provokes you. I got it. Interesting. Yeah, I got it from another, um, uh, um, uh, Sharon Garlow Brown wrote a series of books and that phrase she used in, in her storytelling of in spiritual formation that you linger with what provokes you so when we get provoked you know just don't stay in the anger or don't if you're provoked and you're worrying about money don't just worry ask yourself what it is really that you're afraid of and once you can start asking yourself those questions i think are and go to god with those questions i think that's where the freedom starts to come because financial freedom really happens in your heart, in your mind, in mm -hmm. your walk with the Lord. Even if it happens here first, before it may even play out in your bank account. I think true freedom. Because I also think that people can have no debt and still be enslaved to money. So, yes, but that's, that's an, right. another topic. Yes, that's right. That's <laughs> you right. can write that yeah, book. Yeah, I am very <laughs> Yes. So, so, I mean, you mentioned coaching and mm -hmm. you've been part of coaching for a number of years and I know that you offered the Unleashed mm -hmm. um, course or program, I'm not sure. Um, and you've heard a lot of stories from people. Yes. Um, and I know having read the manuscript um, that you share a number of stories in there. Mm -hmm. Was there a story that began to unfold while you were writing it that in some senses perhaps took you into a deeper place as you rethought, you shared a few things in terms of the sweater mm -hmm. chapter, rewriting it, kind of refocusing it. But yeah. as it came together, where there's some other things the Lord started to... That I didn't write about. Yes. Well, I mean, this year has been a COVID year. <laughs> yes, it has. Need I say more? Next yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah, but... um, you know, I, I kept saying to my kids, I guess I better go reread my own book because... <laughs> You know, you talk about trust and yeah. not worrying and and then you start worrying and then you like, you know, fear crops up and um, I, I, I don't know what, I think the Lord is just taking David and I into deeper place. Like even the fact that I've written a book and, and I wanted to write a book, sure, as a, as a writer, as a trained in journalism, sure, that's in the back of your mind. Wouldn't that be a great thing? But to actually have it done now and now being in a totally different place, I feel like I'm, I have to lean into him every day in ways I never imagined because it's all too bigger than 
It's all much bigger than I imagined. And sometimes people may feel that in their story. You know, there's one lady, Martin, she came to Unleashed. She's been in coaching and she has five children and um, she was separated and divorced and it's a hard story. But to here we have eight testimonies in the book and um, her story, I just read it this morning. It is such a beautiful testimony of God's provision in, in a hard place. And she learned things practically, how to pay for a car instead of going debt for it. She made some hard decisions in the midst of COVID when she lost work, you know, and she leaned into the community around her to help support her. So, you know, those stories inspire me in this year to keep trusting as well. Like mm -hmm. even in this place of, I don't, I don't know what's next. You've written a book and don't ask me what's next. I don't know. Cause that might be on your list. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So I don't know if that answers your question. I think so. Um, as I heard you talking, you, you know, you said you included eight testimonies. Mm -hmm. What were you hoping to achieve by including that? Not every book does that. You know, sometimes it's their own personal story, but you share some others. Story. Yeah. I story like, I think I have a bit of that from my journalism days. I just you start talking to people and I, I think it's also how I'm wired by the Lord. I love hearing people's stories. I, I'm a reader. I love stories. And you learn so much. You pro like if someone picks that book up, they might learn more from those eight stories than they would learn in, in the other things I write. And that's the beauty. It's just this declaration of this is who God has been in my life. And I wanted them to share stories of how they've trusted God in their finances. You know, um, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Well, what does it mean to seek the kingdom? That's actually what I think I started with. I sent e some emails to friends. Okay, right. how, what does it mean to you to seek the kingdom of God first? Would you mind writing a testimony about that? Well, they all came back with a myriad of stories that did touch on that theme, but you know, even your wife, Arlene, I wrote this beautiful one about Jehovah Jireh being the provider. And I mean, that I, I didn't know what to expect. And when I read them in there laid out between the pages, I'm like, it's so rich because this is, I always feel like this is like holy ground when I hear someone's story. Mm -hmm. You know, when we hear the client's stories of pain and suffering or, or they get an aha moment, just one little piece of financial wisdom that they've applied like I just feel like I have to take my shoes off because this is God doing something in people's lives that is that you could never do only he could do it with them and I I think I'm hoping that as people read the book they're going to start this journey and then they're going to have these same kind of stories that they read about from the people that are in the book and that that is really and then I hope they they send me the stories and then I can put them all in a book and there'll be like 200 right, right. stories right. of God's yeah. care because that's that's what encourages us as people to hear another story. I mean, Revelation says they overcame um, the enemy. I'm paraphrasing really yeah. badly, but by, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, that word of your, and that word for anyone who's listening, whatever God does in big or small ways today for you, providing in your finances, and I always say this, if he whispers to you and says, just go put $25 extra on that visa bill, just just do that today. And then tomorrow he gives you another word, like just go do it and then partner with him and see what he will do and providing in those places you never imagined he would. Yeah. So in some senses, it's to inspire them, but also for them to recognize that God is God. Yes. He was God in their lives, yes. and he's God in your life yes. as in the audience. And yes. so the same promises apply to them yes. as those who share their testimonies. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how heart encouraging is that? And I, I think it is. I think it's the sto those stories that say, oh, man, if, if God did that for them, who, why won't he do it for me? And it ties back into the, the one chapter I write about at the beginning about stopping to consider. You know, Jesus says in Matthew 6, consider the lilies of the field. You know, consider the birds of the sky. Well, at the pace at which we live, we don't stop and consider too much. But I hope that those stories will encourage people to stop and consider 
maybe God will do that for me. Mm. Maybe it won't look the same way, but maybe he cares for me just as much as he cares for Arlene and Martin and Dan and Nancy. You know, maybe maybe God will do that for me. It would, Such a wonderful encouragement. It would. Cause, and, I'm, and I really am serious. I, like, if people wrote me the, their stories, I, I would put them in a book. Like, that would be, yeah. that could be cultivating trust, you know, stories. Yes, because yes. that would be amazing. To You know, it's not, it's not me or you doing it, even though we've been called to this place. It's God doing it. Sure is. It's wonderful to hear those stories and uh, see God's faithfulness. And, yeah. And uh, one of the things that you talk about, in some senses, are some of the characteristics of who Father is. Mm-hmm. In light of our own journeys of faith and the area of finances, mm-hmm. as you reflect on the book and some of it, what was there any one aspect of Father's? Mm-hmm character that really struck you or um, um, impacted you or just several because I think some of your titles of your chapters kind of touch it yeah I I was thinking about that this morning and actually when we recorded the podcast what jumped out at me which I hadn't considered I can't remember what you had asked me on there but was it was a similar question, but then I was thinking Jesus was the one to tie together money and the character of God. And what was he tying together? That he cares, that he is with us, that, you know, consider the lilies of the field. They don't toil or spin. You know, the birds don't store and store up in barns, but yet the Father cares for them. You know, and how much more will he care for you? And scripture says he knows our needs before we ask him. So um, the fact that he cares and that he's loving and he's a father, um, I, I just, and it was profound to me. It, it hit me when we did the podcast that Jesus had already connected the two. Mm-hmm. He connects, He connects our relationship with God and money. And he does it in a profound way. And I'm like, ah, I need another chapter. I didn't write that chapter. Um, because it, it's it been, it's just stuck with me ever since we've done that, that recording. Um, so that he is a God who cares because I think that's what's at risk. We don't believe he's good. We don't know because, and you're right. I, I guess you remind me. I have in some of the sections at the end of the chapters, I have this word called cultivating communion. And it's communion because communion is an ongoing thing. It's an, a minute by minute mm-hmm. relationship with the Lord. And we cultivate it because it's intentional. It's, it's digging, it's intentionally thinking about the Lord. And in some of those chapters, I leave the character qualities of God in there for people to look at and say, do I really believe it? Do I really believe he's good? Because if I don't believe he's good, I'm not going to put my hand Mm -hmm. in his and and trust him. And we need, I I just feel more and more convicted. We need to know who he is and who he, what he says about himself to really grasp, grab a hold of, of what he has for us. You know, when you said that on the podcast, I was really struck about that, about Jesus connecting Mm -hmm. the two. And I thought, what a profound statement, because I think sometimes um, perhaps even consciously or unconsciously, we consider God holy and money almost profane. You know, we we right, we, right. we separate the two and not yeah. recognizing that Jesus does the connect. He first. does. I know. And he doesn't look at it from that way. No. It's a means to advance the kingdom, mm-hmm. be a part of what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And so, as you commented about that, I thought, Lord, yes, that's. A wonderful way you use the common issues of life mm-hmm. and you do the bridging yeah the connecting and I until that I don't even know what you had asked me but I'm like wow you did the I don't I didn't do the connecting you did it first 
and you had me go to Matthew 6 because you want, and here I get it a, a year later and the thing's published and I get, oh, well, that's what you were doing. You were making the connection. Yeah. And here I've been trying to do that in, in my own stories. And anyway, it's, it's, I just love how Jesus does that. Like, I think he's laughing at me, not at me, but you know, he's chuckling. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Right, that's right, that's I, I just right. withheld that one from you till today. Thank yes. you. Thank yes, you, Lord. Yes. But I do think you do do that connection yeah. in, in yeah. some wonderful, relatable mm -hmm. ways. And I Thank think you. that was the part that struck me in reading the book is uh, it's like you and I sitting uh, across from each other mm -hmm. in dialogue. You you just open your heart and you just begin to share. Mm -hmm. You share some of your stories. You share some of your insights. Um, and I think that's what others will be, and I'm hoping you guys will all glean as you read through it, as I did. I was impacted by those stories. And um, mm -hmm. a book that challenged, but it connected the issues, um, but left me with something to process. Mm -hmm. So I like your 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 comment there about uh, linger when provoked, yes. rather than um, resisting or avoiding, mm -hmm. which I think we often do. Yes. But it's actually embracing it mm -hmm. and um, chewing on it, mm -hmm. meditating on it, mm -hmm. uh, lingering, as you said. So um, I think you are inviting people uh, into that place, and I think it's a wonderful place for people to do who will seize that moment. Mm -hmm. In doing that so. yeah and that's what I'm hoping because normally uh, I, I never finish the story why we kept finding God's hope and freedom for your finances um, I actually went to my coach I have a coach who's coached me through the writing process and uh, we actually the day that my the my editor friend had said I, I you might consider not putting that as the tagline so I said okay why don't uh, like, I don't know. I'll, let me think about it. I didn't know what to. So I went, I had talked to Dave a bit about it. We didn't have time. And then my, I had a call with the coach and she said, okay, let's tackle this. And then she just asked me some great questions, one after the other, to ponder and think about. And in the end, I realized I had written it for folks who struggle financially. I was writing it for our clients. I, I want people to see that money and, and the Lord are so connected and it can be good mm -hmm. and it can be a means and a doorway into deeper relationship and that's why we kept it so I think people might be surprised when they pick it up and are looking for a financial book and they're gonna be I, I think I, I'm hoping it surprises them mm -hmm. I, I yeah. hope they don't take it like a devotional that they're just gonna like a bag of chips they're just gonna quickly inhale and walk away I really I hope they treat it like it's a meal um, and maybe ask the Lord to show them things they haven't yet seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a how-to book. No, no, it isn't. It isn't. No. And, and so I think that's wonderful because it, it takes people on their own journey yes. to the degree they want to go into that place. Because I think David and I, one of our intentional things that we've said is we don't have the answers, but we know the one who has your mm -hmm. answer. Yes. And we don't have it perfect. I don't trust God perfectly. I say that clearly in the introduction and in the beginning of the book. Like the irony of all of it is I've been more prone to worry this year because of COVID and, and the place in life and the busyness. And here I'm writing a book about it. Well, it's because he's teaching me still. And I, I hope that, that people will see that, that it's a journey like you've already said. Mm -hmm. It's a daily journey. And I, I hope um, those listening um, actually will um, be interested in something because uh, in something so authentic because you really share your heart in the book. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about that too. <laughs> um, and, and I feel and in some senses, you know, when people actually share their heart with words, um, people feel connected with them. Mm. And so I won't be surprised if people reach out to you uh, and I know um, you want to encourage people to actually order their book. Mm -hmm. And where can they do that? So there's a website called, um, or yeah, morethanenoughbooks.com or .ca. Um, it's just we did it as a tagline with our biz business, More Than Enough. And um, But we, you can contact me at info at morethanenough.ca. Email me if you want a copy. If you order through the website, you'll get an ebook and the book. Um, mail to you but um, if you're local in the Ottawa area um, 
we can figure out you can come to the office and pick up a copy if you want so and maybe um, you know we have friends at one-way ministries maybe we can have some here too we'll we'll figure it out just yes, let us yes. know but yes, but you right. can go to more than enough books.com yeah yeah that's great yeah. and as people go on their journey and want to share little nuggets or insights or testimonies would they contact you at info at at info at more than enough.ca would be great that okay. would be a good place to I think it's always great for authors to receive some feedback yes. and see how your book has impacted them and yeah and if you want to write your story in a you know a little testimony like in there I will take your stories and compile them so I'll, oh, I'll, that's like, wonderful. yeah that would be that's a lot wonderful. of fun to do so as we wrap things up is there any one thing you would like to leave the audience listening what thought would you like to leave with them if you're worried if you're afraid um, if you find you can't trust God because of the circumstances of your life then I would I would say gently then just tell him that tell him you can't trust him tell him it's been hard pour it out to him and see how he will come in and answer you because he will and he likes an honest vulnerable transparency and when it comes to your money that's hard to do because we're full of shame and embarrassment about it sometimes but I think it's um, I, I wouldn't say you know the Bible says we shouldn't test God and all these things but I would lay it out to him and ask him and cry to him Tell him you don't believe. Tell him you're not trusting. Tell him you're tired of worrying. Just tell him, be honest about it, and see, uh, see what happens, uh, and how he'll provide for you in that space. Thank you, Beth. Those are some wonderful words to leave with the yeah. audience today. Great. Thanks for thanks for having me. Well, I have we we I guess it's let's talk money. Um, you yeah. better do a show soon. Yes, I guess. that's right. That's right. Yes. Um, yeah. Anyway, thank you for joining us today on Let's Talk Money with Dave and Reb. And um, we are glad you joined us. And again, reach out info at morethanenough.ca if you have any questions or order the book morethanenough.com. Or you can go to our website morethanenough.ca and you'll find out all the things uh, we do at More Than Enough. Thanks for joining us.